Hi all, in this video we are going to learn about Boolean variable and the operators. Before you use Boolean, you have to identify whether it is suitable for your program or for the case. So when to use it, usually we will look at the um, conditions whether it is yes or no, whether it is true or false. If that is uh, the conditions, then uh, you can use Boolean. Okay, And you have to understand that Boolean in C++, it is considered not an integer, it is also considered not string. It is not one zero, it is true false, but it is not TF. Okay. Syntax is very simple. Uh, we just have to declare as Boolean data type, and then we can give a variable name and we set whether it is true or false at the beginning of initializations. Then we can test whether the particular the conditions fulfill or not. If yes, then um, we can do for the next uh, statements or next, next process. For an example, if Boolean value is set is true, we assume that it is sunny day, it means sunny day, true. Then we display the message, it is a nice day to go out. Otherwise, means it is false, then we will display the message, do not forget to bring your umbrella. Okay, this is a quite simple example. When we define our, when we transfer the programming part, we declare a Boolean. So in this example, we declare, declare Booleans, we use is sunny, and we assume the case is true, meaning that today uh, is sunny day, so it is true case. So when we test it, <clears throat> if the condition is true, then we will see out it is a nice day to go outside. Or else means if it is a false case, then do not forget to bring your umbrella. Okay, I hope uh, it is clear. I took the codings, I took the codes from the slides. So I just paste it. You can see that we have declared is sunny as true. And then we test whether it is sunny is true or not. And if um, this case, don't forget to change it to um, double quotes, standard double quotes. Okay, it seems like the compiler do not understand the double quote that we copy and paste from our slides. Okay, now this should work. Okay, let's try compile and run. You found that the output is, is a nice day to go outside. So what is happening here? We assign boolean is sunny equal to true. So check if the condition is true, then we will output it is a nice day to go outside. So this is happening. And if I change it to false, compile run again, then it will show that do not forget to bring your umbrella. So in this case, it is false. It checks it is true or false. If it is true, it will perform this one. If it is false, it will jump to else. Okay, now let's go back to the slide. Next, we learned about the not operator. This is considered as if it is true, but after you add in the not operator, it will become false. If it is false, after you add the operator, it will become true. Okay. So for an example of this one, if you declare booleans variable name felt equal to false, when you test it, it will test whether it is true. It reverse, it reverse um, uh, the, the declarations over here in this part. Okay, let's try for this example. If Boolean value is true, meaning it is sunny, then we display the message, it is a nice day to go out. Same example as uh, we did just now. But now, we try to include not. Not. Okay, and we see whether what we are doing is right or not. Let's try for the coding part. Okay, back to the code. We change it back to true conditions. So with true conditions, if it is checked, it is true, it will display this one. But now, what will happen if we put a not in front of this statement, in front of these variables? We compile and run. If we found that it goes to do not forget to bring your umbrella, which is false statements, this one. So what happened was, we declare is sunny as true, but when we include not symbol, it will become false. It reverse. It reverse what we have declared. That's the reason why it straight away go to here. This is the function of not. I hope this is clear. Let's continue for other operators. Besides the not operator, we also have n percent n, and we also have all k. 
cases. So N cases is represented by double M percent. This symbol is called M percent. And all cases represented by vertical bars, two vertical bars. So basically, this is the logic. These are the logics that we always learned. True, true is true. True, false is false for N percent. And then false, true is false. False, false, false. Okay, I hope um, you still remember all of this logic, N and O, that we can use it for the uh, for the for the programming parts, okay, to combine conditions, two conditions. Let's say if case variable A is smaller than B, and variable B is larger than C, we want to make sure both cases are true, then we can use this N case to define the two conditions. Or we may combine them. For this one, we use N, this part, we use O. So always programming go from the top to the bottom and then left to the right. To perform the task. Okay, go for example three. Let's say display user underscore input. Um, if user is between, if user input is between five to ten. Okay, otherwise we will display the message as wrong number. So in mathematical equation, it is very clear that we always learn to write five less than or equal to the user input, which is x value probably, and then smaller or equal to ten. So this represent this statement. But in programming, we cannot write in that case. We cannot write like this. It doesn't work. We have to separate them. The first part, we found that user underscore input is smaller than, is larger than or equal to five. So we break it to the first part. And the second part, which is user underscore input is smaller than 10. Then we have to combine them. We have to combine them using double n percent cases. And there is one more mistake from these uh, expressions. Equations, you found that the bracket start with one bracket and then close it to represent the first part. And we have double n percent. And there is one missing bracket over here because we have one more bracket here for this case. Okay, so when we prepare um, the, the expressions or the equations, we have to always make sure the brackets are balanced. Otherwise, uh, the compiler will not compile the program. Okay. So here is the syntax recordings. We can have in user inputs, and then we can put it if user input larger than five and user input smaller or equal to 10, then we can see out, you have enter user input, else uh, the input value is not five to 10. Let's try for the coding part. If we refer to example three, the copy and put the codes here and try to improve it before we compile. Based on the slide, we have to get the user input and then we have to check the user input and print out or display the message. So this part is a output message plus input. Okay, see out. Okay, after we have inserted the C out and the C in, now it will read compiler will read the user input and after that we will check whether this user input is within the range of 5 and 10. If it is yes, it will display you have entered a number or else it will display this one. So let's compile and try to run. Okay, please enter an integer and type 4. Enter. It shows that input value is not 5 to 10. This is correct. Again. So if I type 6, you have entered 6. So which shows this part. And then what if I run again? And this round smaller than 10. Okay, if you put 10, you have entered 10. If I put 11, find 10. If I put 11, it is not 5 to 10. Now we go for example four. You have to write the program to display the message. Both inputs are positive integers if user input A and B are both positive. And then display the message either one input is positive integer if either A or B is positive. And the display message both inputs are negative integer if none of the input is positive integers. So we will compare A and B. 
and then we will output the required message. So logically, we can write like this. If A larger than zero and if B larger than zero, combine them to become one if statement, we will test whether they are positive or not. And then if A larger than zero or if B larger than zero, we also can combine them. And then either one, either one, because we are using O, O operator, either one case is positive, then we can display either one input is positive integer. While the last case is A smaller than zero and B smaller than zero, if we combine them, become this using N percent. So we can check both are negative. Right? So when we change the coding, this could be the possible answer. Okay, A, we compare B and then A and B using N percent at all. And the last one is up to you whether you want to write. Because program will run from top to the bottom. Once it checks if statements fulfill these conditions, it will print out and then it will leave uh, the, the if loop if loop. And if it check again, it fulfill these conditions. If yes, then it will move to other loop. Okay, it will not um, check this one and then go to here, go to here. It will choose either one to display and then it will skip for the rest. If you use if else statements. Okay, this is just um, proposed coding we tried later on. All right now, let's try for the coding part. I copy paste the code from the slides. Let's declare two variable in an A. Let's say they are both integers, positive integers. We try with positive integers. And then we check the condition for A and B. If both conditions larger than zero, then we will see up this one. One more missing bracket here. And then we will check else if. One more missing bracket. So now else, other than that, what will be happened? We consider both A and B are negative. This is the conditions. So now, no more error. Let's try to compile and run. They say that both A and B uh, are positive integers. In my A is 5, B is 3. Now let's say if I change the B to negative number, negative integer, run again. They say that either A or B is positive integer. Either one. Okay, because B is negative. Now I change A to negative integer and run. They still show that either A or B is positive integer. Either one. A or B is positive integer. And if both we put as negative integers, let's try. If we show now both A and B are negative integers. So I hope you can understand about how we apply the N operator and O operator in this case. Let's try. Thank you for watching this video.